Please be seated. Well, once again, welcome to the 128th meeting of All Saints Parish. It is quite remarkable to think that for 128 years, this community has come together as the body of Christ for worship, for lifelong learning, and for community support. Now, I know that 128 years is a blip in the life of some churches. I mean, on the exterior wall out here, there's a stone that dates from the 11th century from Hereford Cathedral that was part of the Norman restoration of that place. And even by then, by the time the Normans got there, Hereford Cathedral had already been a place of worship for something like three times as long as our 128 years. So, a blip. On the other hand, 128 years is nothing to sneeze at. 128 years is 6,656 Sundays. Now, I know that Episcopalians like things the way they've always been, and 6,656 is an awful lot of iterations, but in truth, not one of those Sundays was identical to another. Sure, a lot was familiar. The structure of the service is similar, but that has changed from morning prayer to Eucharist. The readings change week to week, but they repeat over time. The music is sometimes familiar, sometimes new. The prayers vary week to week. But what always, always changes is that each week, All Saints welcomes a totally unique configuration of people. Now think about that. Every Sunday is unique in that respect and utterly unrepeatable as a gathering of the body of Christ. Never before and never again will this exact configuration of people be together to worship God in precisely this way. And that has been true for each one of the 6,000 plus Sundays that we have worshiped here. The individuals who gather here are different each week, but there are some common constant factors in every gathering of the faithful. And that's been true since, well, since before Jesus climbed up that hill and started to preach. No matter which individuals are here, the body of Christ is always made up of certain types of people, like the poor in spirit. Are the poor in spirit here today? Of course they are. Don't worry, I won't call you out or make you stand up if that's you. But I know that there are people here who are not sure why they are here, not sure what they believe or if they believe, not sure that they have what it takes, whatever that is, not sure that they have enough or if they are enough. So regardless of who shows up, the poor in spirit find their way here without fail. It's not always the same individuals, but every Sunday, people who are poor in spirit show up. And if that's not you today, great. But take a look around you, because it is likely to be someone sitting near you. And if it is you, and you are feeling poor in spirit today, then I want you to hear this. You are blessed. Side note here, one of the tasks, one of the gifts and responsibilities that is conferred upon people at their priestly ordination is pronouncing God's blessing. So as I go through this and say you are blessed, I don't mean that in the kind of motivational poster sort of way. I mean it, and please hear it, with all of the authority 
to pronounce God's blessing that comes with my ordination. So again, if you are poor in spirit, you are blessed. How about those who mourn? I know you're here. I know that some of you have had recent losses. I know some of you are having a visit from some past grief, because you never can tell when a grief might show up. So if you are not grieving today, again, great, but take a look around. Someone near you is in a tender place, is feeling sad or conflicted or one of the other complex emotions that grief always appears through. And if you have made it here today carrying any kind of grief or loss, then hear this. You are blessed. The meek. Now, I know some of you prefer to fly under the radar and keep your head down and do your work and not make a fuss. We all know people with truly gentle souls, don't we? And what about the people who, because of race or class or gender or sexuality, are too often disempowered in the world, who sort of have had meekness thrust upon them, who have had to learn a lot of hard lessons about navigating through the rigid demands of the privileged? Again, if that's not you, it's someone you know. So take a look around. And to the meek, the gentle, the disempowered, I say, you are blessed. How about all who hunger and thirst for righteousness? I know that there are plenty of you here. You are blessed. The merciful, I also know that there's plenty of you here. You are blessed. The pure in heart, well, that's, I guess that's really between you and God, but uh, by your fruits, we do know who you are. And you are blessed. Peacemakers. Please don't think about this in the global sense. I mean, I know we need people who are working for international peace, but today let's focus on the peacemakers who are in our midst, the people who bring a calming presence to whatever they do, who seek equitable outcomes in the many conflicts of life. I know that many of you are peacemakers in your homes and your places of work, and you are blessed. Persecuted? I really hope that none of you are feeling that way, but maybe you are. And maybe you've been reviled or spoken of falsely, and if so, you know what? You are blessed. See, I'm always a little afraid when we come to Matthew that in our constant striving society that we hear the Beatitudes as impossible challenges or stretch goals or a set of rules to live by or virtues to aspire to or at the very worst as platitudes to be glibly stated and then conveniently ignored. But today, I really want us all to hear them in their simplest form, as blessings. Nothing more and nothing less. Nadia Boltz Weber once wondered about the Beatitudes, asking, what if Jesus wasn't setting up some nine-point program to a more perfect you? What if he was actually just blessing people, especially the people who never seem to receive blessings otherwise, the people who society doesn't seem to have much time for, people in pain, people who work for peace instead of profit, people who exercise mercy instead of vengeance. That's how I want us to hear these today, because you are blessed when you practice humility, when you show up with your peaceful presence, 
when you open your heart to others, when you do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with everyone, especially with God. And I know that there are so many of you here who do that every single day. And I want you to know that God sees you and that here in this unique configuration of historical events, this body of Christ blesses you. And that I am grateful to be with you in this community, learning and growing and ministering alongside of you. 128 years. We have an awful lot to celebrate. We have an awful lot to give thanks for. We also have challenges, which we will continue to face with faith and courage. And we have plenty of wonderful leaders here to guide us. Next Sunday, everything will be different and similar. We will be different and similar. You will be different and similar. But let this truth remain with you as you live your lives between now and whenever we are together again. You are beloved of God, and you are blessed. Amen.